best-selling author, uh, Brad Thor, joins us now. Friend of our show, of course, number one New York Times best-selling author. His latest book, Hidden Order, is out. And we wanted to bring you on, Brad. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're you're welcome, boy. A snagglepuss uh, intro. That's that's well, classy. I got to say that's the first time I've ever had one of those. Right? I'll, I'll, we only bring that because we had a li- mountain lion sighting in D.C. That's yeah, why, and of why course, snagglepuss is that my my cultural reference frame on a on a mountain lion is a cartoon character, of course. Heavens to Murgatroyd! Thank you. All right. Uh, well, listen, Brad. Uh, we want to bring you on because yesterday we saw the passing of Tom Clancy uh, passed away in Baltimore, local uh, guy here in Maryland, of course. But uh, wow, what I mean, talk about. Uh, changing the genre. I mean, the, once in a while, you'll see an author or a painter or a filmmaker, uh, and as soon as they hit the scene, everything changes. Is that what Tom Clancy was to you? A- absolutely. Um, I reached out to Tom's agents yesterday uh, to extend my condolences and, and tell them how very sad I was. My family, my dad was a huge reader of Clancy. Uh, you know, one of the greatest impacts on whether your kids will be great readers is not whether you read them bedtime stories every night, but whether or not they see you reading. And I remember just as a young man watching my dad pour over these Clancy novels. And as soon as he would finish them, I would take them and start reading. And uh, uh, Tom was a huge impact, uh, had a huge impact on me, was a huge reason I wanted to become a thriller author. And he really was the dean uh, of this genre. I mean, he created this genre. Uh, you, 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 Freddie Forsyth and Robert Ludlum had been doing their thing, but nobody ever did it like Clancy. All right, so one of the things he was known for was understanding all of the high-tech world of the military and of our national in, uh, national security infrastructure and sort of explaining that. For many people, what they knew about the military and how it operated and what they knew about uh, you know our CIA and our national security agency came from uh, reading these, these Tom Clancy novels. Tom was an interesting guy because his claim was growing up that he passed over a lot of children's literature even as a child, and he loved books about naval history. He loved reading engineering manuals. This, this really, he had uh, machine oil, motor oil in his veins, hmm. and uh, I, I always love that about writers who who don't necessarily. I, I tell people, don't write what you think is going to make money. Write what you love to read because that's where your passion is. That's where you're going to be successful. And that was so true in Clancy's case. And, you know, Clancy liked to joke that as many friends as he had at the Pentagon and the CIA, he always said, don't tell me anything classified. I don't want to know it. I'll make up stuff if I have to in my books, but I don't want to be accused of revealing stuff. And so often Clancy did such great research that he was able to pick up point A and point C and figure out what point B was. Sometimes he'd make it up, but he was right. And uh, it, it was that accuracy, that insider you, information you felt you were getting from a Clancy novel that added to the thrills. Number one New York Times bestselling author Brad Thor is our guest. His latest book is Hidden Order. When we had you in studio a couple months ago, we talked about your last book, Blacklist, and how it almost foretold the whole NSA story and, and, and everything that's going on in the, in the headlines today. Clancy did that a lot. Uh, it, it, talk about how he oftentimes, his plots from two books ago became today's headlines. Well, you know, a thriller writer's job really is to beat the headlines. And I think that's something that makes uh, successful thriller writers successful, is that they can kind of look at the tea leaves in the bottom of the cup and say, I think this is the next big thing coming down the pike. Or, you know, I've got contacts, and but they keep talking about these particular issues. I'm hearing this from friends in Langley. I'm hearing this at the Pentagon. Yeah, can, I, can I just stop you there? Because that's the thing. A lot of people say Clancy was really keyed in. I mean, he, he had some major sources at very high levels, didn't he? He, he did. He had a lot of friends. People loved him. But let, let's remember what really helped launch Clancy is President Reagan loved him. His book. He loved the hunt for Red October, and he called it My Kind of Yarn, and it was unputdownable. And it was similar to uh, when President Kenny, Kennedy raved about Ian Fleming and James Bond. That really gave uh, yeah. Clancy a huge boost, but he deserved it. The hunt for Red October was fantastic, yeah. and then uh, the books that followed it up were also awesome. Let's remember a moment in Hunt for Red October, the movie, for a sec. I present you the ballistic missile submarine Red October. My officers and I request. Asylum in the United States of America. 
books really translated well for film, too. Uh, uh, Brad Thor, you said on your Facebook page yesterday, rest in peace, Tom Clancy, thank you for your patriotism and the countless hours of thrilling reading. Talk to me about his patriotism. It really did shine through his love of this country and his desire to keep it safe. Absolutely. In fact, I was reading the uh, the New York Times uh, uh, kind of obituary for Tom, and it was funny because they were recalling uh, ways that the New York Times had reviewed his books, and it kind of irked uh, some of the, the lefties at the Times that all of his American uh characters, particularly those in the intelligence field and in the military, were devoted husbands, were men of honor, <laughs> were, were good, upstanding men, and the chain of command was competent. So this issue that, uh, that people, Americans in the military and in the intelligence world, could be good men, devoted husbands and fathers and competent, uh, rubbed them a little bit the wrong way. Uh, listen, Clancy was a conservative. He's a Republican. He was an all-around good guy who loved this country very much and who loved our military and loved the men and women. Uh, in our intelligence world that had to go away from home to do some of this nation's most dangerous business, and he wanted to honor them in his work, and he did a great job doing that. Now, uh, the, the key book in all of the, the, uh, the big Clancy doubles was Jack Ryan. And I, I, did you sort of, you know, you have a character in your book who, who shows up and all the way. Did you sort of decided that you needed to follow that, uh, that pattern uh, when, you, uh, when you started writing your, your thrillers? But, you know, what I've always said about Tom and Jack Ryan is I am convinced that Jack Ryan was Tom's alter ego. <laughs> that Tom got to, to live out these fantasies uh, through through him, just the way my character, Scott Harbath, is my alter ego. I'm sure Dirk Pitt is for Cl uh, you know, for uh, Clive Cussler and uh, James Bond was for Ian Fleming. I think that's the neat thing about if you're going to do a recurring character, it better be somebody you love and want to spend time with. And it's obvious by the response that Tom got to the Jack Ryan clan, uh, the Jack Ryan character in all of his novels, that not only did he love it, but the readers loved Jack Ryan, too. Well, who better to reflect on the life and legacy and work of Tom Clancy than our friend Brad Thor, number one New York Times bestselling author, uh, latest book, Hidden Order. Brad, so great to have you here, and thank you for reflecting yeah, you. on uh, Calvert County's own Tom Clancy.